uh, as you heard, there's there's two of us here. Um, my, myself, I'm Jeremy Tang. I'm one of the co-founders of Shark Indicators. And we've been at this for, uh, well, coming up on 13 some odd years now. So we've been in the business for a little while. It's always great to hear from other uh, presenters like Joel Wise, as I've heard, he's a really good, great guy. Uh, you know, and I'm always excited here to see other uh, vendors adding to the Ninja Trader ecosystem. Uh, and so today, uh, we're going to talk about a couple things. So if I'm just going to advance my slide here. All right, we're going to talk about auto trading in general, uh, the ins and outs of it in terms of why it's exciting, uh, maybe some of the caveats. Uh, that's, a, that's definitely a buzzword, I think, in the industry. Uh, then we're going to go ahead and show you um, us building an auto trader from scratch. And then finally, we're going to wrap it up with some Q&A, hopefully, if we can we got some extra time there. Um, all right, so I'm just going to crack right into it. Uh, and so uh, let me see if I can see people, uh, maybe the responses or whatever. Okay, cool. I can see questions and answers. I've got a question for everybody here. Who here has thought about or who's wanted an auto trader? Like who here is kind of like interested or maybe even has gone as far as maybe even considering uh, getting one or building one themselves? Uh, if you could go ahead and just you know answer in the questions and i can i should be able to see a couple of your responses here okay so so we've got a couple of responses <clears throat> so any of those of you that actually have aspired to auto trade you know um how many of you actually try to build one from scratch okay so we've got some very interested people i don't see anybody um uh, okay so somebody's actually doing it in trade station that's great okay so Actually, and I'm going to ask kind of a, a question that's a little bit seemingly off to the side here. How many of you guys have a system and and you've back tested it and or you've wanted to back test it? Let's even include people that, that want to that maybe even haven't yet, but that's their int your intention. OK, so we got I, I only see a one. Yes, actually. So that's I don't, to be honest, I'm not surprised because. Um, if you really think about it for a second, OK, so. If you're going to back test a, a trade system, presumably your own, or maybe one that you've found and you want to vet how good it is, um, you really have two options, right? You can do it by hand, which is obviously very tedious and time consuming, or you can use the computer. And if you use the computer, which is the thing that probably makes the most sense, because typically you're going to have to do it many times over before you find a trading system that you actually can trade, uh, you actually need a full blown auto trader. To do it right you need to tell the computer when you're going in you need to tell the computer how those trades are going to be managed and you gotta tell the computer how you're going to get out right and that is by definition an auto trader right and so a lot of people don't really make that connection in order to back test that's something relatively kind of baseline in terms of if you're testing your system you actually need an auto trader to do that effectively so what are your options if you want to uh, acquire an auto trader for yourself and presumably say you have your own system or whatever or maybe you want to adopt somebody else's well you can either a learn to code um and that in itself and take it for myself i've been a developer pretty much for my entire adult life and and then some uh and meaning that i started in, in my early early teens uh and and i'll just say it's it's uh it's a it's a it's a discipline that that requires respect and, and a lot of mastery and and time devoted to it uh and as a trader you may have to, maybe that's not necessarily the best use of your time perhaps you're better off using your time to learn how to trade and, and if i'm honing your trading skills instead uh or you can hire a coder that's another possibility uh but those of you that have never really been into uh say a development project where you're paying for it uh you know i'll just kind of it, kind of allude to the fact it's it's it definitely sometimes has its challenges and hurdles uh and you know especially if your coder is, is someone that's not necessarily a trader uh you can get yourself into a, a fair bit of uh let's say problem solving and a lot of cost uh, when it comes to uh fixing and, and or trying to communicate what you want to do not to mention that you know again building out a trading system uh not to not even an auto trading system but just a trading system sometimes requires a lot of iteration and a lot of development and that takes time and money um Third option, maybe buy an existing auto trader, something that already trades out there for you in a specific way. I like to call those black boxes because you don't really know what went into 
the uh, the auto trader and its style of trading. And so let's just let's talk about black boxes for a second. Okay, so <clears throat> the reason why I like to refer to a lot of they like say say you buy a, an off the shelf auto trading system. Uh, the reason why I like to talk, refer to them as black boxes is because they often are sort of like pre-configured to trade a certain way. And that way may, may or may not be necessarily how you like to trade. However, it's just, you know, it's built that way. It's more or less a static machine with a few knobs and, and whatnot that you can maybe adjust and fine tune a few things. But for by and large, it's going to trade the way it's going to trade, the way it's designed. And, and the way we kind of see things at our company is that, you know, trade systems are, they're really kind of individual. Uh, you, as a trader, you uh, presumably you would have a few markets that you like to look at. You maybe have some instruments that you like to trade, and you perhaps you even got a style. Like maybe you like mean reversion, maybe you like trend following, maybe you like scalping. You know, the the, the list is pretty much endless. And you know what works for somebody may not work for you uh, because you just got a different risk tolerance. Maybe you got a just different personality, different style. You like certain different different kind of instruments, and so we like to see. We like to sort of state, you know, there really isn't kind of a one size fits all situation, and that's why I think a lot of auto traders get a bad rap because uh, you're, you know, you're kind of like forced to trade the way it was designed, right? So we, as Shark Indicators, take an entirely different approach. Okay, we built a platform that allows you to create and express yourself, express your trading rules, your trading style, creating your own automated trading system the way you like it, the way you like to trade it, uh, using your own rules and using uh, a visual graphic node interface that's totally configurable and doesn't require any knowledge of how to code. And believe me, we do have coders that actually buy or use our product. And even if you are a coder, um, uh, you know, and a lot of our customers have told told us, and, and even myself, I will say, you can build it a hell of a lot faster using our software than if you were to to uh, to code it from scratch. Even if you're a very seasoned software developer, uh, and it's certainly if you're just learning to learn learning to code, uh, you can build it way way faster and skip the you know. Like I've been I've been coding like I said I've been for twenty for twenty seven some odd years. I've been a developer. Uh, and and uh, I still would much rather build something quickly. If if my end goal was to to build a, a, a trade system, I'd rather build it in a, in a in a no code solution. It's just way faster. And you're gonna see a lot of really cool things that we show you that that you have an advantage when you're when you're using a system like ours versus trying to code it from scratch. Okay. So the one thing I mentioned before about auto traders is they tend to be um, uh, they they kind of have a bad name. And I, I and, and 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 so I like to I like to think I like to talk about our systems. It's more like an autopilot. Okay, if you think of like professional professional airline pilots, they have these incredible uh, airplanes that can that can literally fly themselves. They can take off and land, um, but yet you still have highly trained pilots that are guiding them or configuring them to go where they want where they want it to go. Um, our software is kind of like that. Right, you don't have to use it if you don't want to. But you know, if you want to take over at any time uh, and use your discretionary uh, ability as a trader to just take over mid-trade, you sure can. Just like an autopilot, you can turn it off, and you still have a lot of fantastic tools to help supercharge your trading, even as a discretionary trader. Or you can turn it on and have the autopilot, essentially your pre-configured plan and trades, execute it just as you had planned them uh, in the beginning. So really, what we have, and I got to sort of have this little slider that shows kind of a you know a, a, a spectrum between the full discretionary and full auto right we look at it as like on one side you got full discretionary traders and the other side you got full automated traders and you got a huge spectrum of anywhere in between and our software doesn't in any way try to pigeonhole you into trading one specific style or the other right and in fact a lot of our customers like to mix it mix it up and you can mix it up mid-trade you can you can be they say you want to take your your entries manually using some guidance, uh, you can do that. And then you have the computer execute the, the the rest of the trade automatically or vice versa. Maybe you like to have the computer do the entries for you because you've got a really complicated entry. And, and then you wanna, you have, but you like to manage the, the trade throughout the trade, like to the, the order management and whatnot, like placing the profit targets and the stop, stop losses and then sort of tightening them and winding them as necessary. 
Uh, and so, so we don't, again, pigeonhole you in any sort of style of trading. You can switch back and forth, even mid-trade. Okay, so we're going to get into kind of a software demo and show you how this is done. Uh, we're going to build out a system very quickly. And to do that, we, we kind of need a, an example. By no means, I can just disclaim this, right? By no means are we advocating you trade this particular system. We just needed some kind of arbitrary rules to show that, you know, you could plug these into our system, plug them into the platform, the system, have those show the signals appropriately, and then show you some pretty cool trade management stuff that you can pre-program in, if you will, um, and show how flexible it is. So to that end, I'm going to pass the buck over to Keith, who's going to take over, and he's going to show you um, show you the building of this, uh, this system here. So let's see if I can, I'll stop viewing, I'll stop sharing my screen here. All right, great. So can you hear me now? Is that any better? Yeah, much better, Keith. Okay. <laughs> Every platform handles it differently. All right. Well, great. Yeah, you said they were they were arbitrary rules. A lot of this comes down to just coming up with your own ideas and seeing how they'll play out and then tweaking from there. So yeah, most people start with arbitrary rules and, and kind of build uh, from, from there. So yeah, let me go ahead and share my screen here. I have no idea which screen it's sharing. Can you see my chart? Yeah, it looks good. We see your chart there. Okay, cool. So just like Jeremy was saying, he's talking about creating your own automated trade systems, but most people don't think about what that requires, how you need to break it down in order to properly build, test, and start trading with automation. So you need the entry signal to decide when am I getting into the trade, and then you have to take that signal in and actually enter your trades and manage them according to your own rules. So we actually had to build two tools to handle both sides of that equation. So let's talk about what Jeremy showed on that last slide where he said, okay, we're going to use a combination of these different indicators. Okay, I've got the Emma Super Trend from a Lizard Trader. They're awesome. Make some really useful uh, indicators that I think everyone should probably have in their toolkit. We're going to make use of the Bollinger Bands um, as well as the ADX. So let's go ahead and bring up Bloodhound. Now, some of you have seen this, some of you haven't, so we'll go over some of the basics, but um, what we're doing here is telling Bloodhound, these are the conditions that I want in order to get an entry signal. When these things are happening, get into the trade for me. That's how we'll use them today. So in here, let's start with the super trend rule and just dive right in. So the super trend is kind of cool because it it is telling us whether we're trending up or down, and eventually we'll use that also as our stop level. So we're gonna say, I require that the super trend is looking like this. Basically, it is an uptrend. So um, there's a lot of different conditions you can detect in here for your signals. We're gonna start with the comparison solver. And in here, I'm just gonna go ahead and I'll connect that. We're gonna get some, possibly some signals on there, but uh, we'll go in and select our indicator. So we'll go in and say, super trend, and double click and say actually what i love about lizard trader is their indicators give us these nice hidden uh plots here that that indicate that yes we are in an uptrend so it has a value of one and a downtrend would be negative one so we can grab onto that fact and say okay when that's true when it's above zero basically is what i've what i've told it to look for give us long or green signals and when it's the other way give us short signals now, uh, if you saw on Jeremy's slide, it said we're doing we're going to focus on long trades only for this example. So let's just exclude the shorts. Now we're getting long signals on every bar in which that condition is true. Cool. Step one is done. Now, he also mentioned doing the ADX. So the ADX is pretty common um, uh, where it's it's meant to kind of imply the, the recent trend. We were trying to exclude overly flat areas. So if for this system, we're going to require above 25 for the ADX. So let's go ahead and add that rule. And actually there's a nice threshold solver that can do exactly that when it's above or below a certain threshold. So we'll go in and select the ADX, double click. Okay. And for the output, we got to tell it that it's the 25 we're looking for. So what we're seeing here is for a long signal, when the ADX is greater than 25, give us a long output. That's one or a full 100% signal. And like I said, we're going to ignore shorts for today. So I'll set that to zero and hit OK. So now, again, we're just looking at that condition in a, in a vacuum because it's always good to look at one thing at a time to confirm that it's behaving the way you are intending and then combine them later. 
so we're seeing every time the adx dips above twenty five we're getting long signals and when it's below we're getting short okay so let's combine those and say okay i'm only wanting a signal when both of those are true give me a signal when this guy is giving us a long signal and also when i let go of this watch the chart and also this guy is giving us a signal when they're both true only then do we get a signal so here super trend is trending up because we're seeing these plots and the adx is above 25. now one thing we noticed while while messing around with this we actually noticed some some good opportunities to expand on this um, where we could actually maybe get a slightly better fill by requiring a little bit more of a confirmation on the adx right so yes as soon as the adx pops above 25 we're getting signals but what if we wait a couple bars and say i need the adx to be above 25 for at least let's say three bars and only then do we start getting signals it's just a kind of a way to confirm that it's not just a temporary blip uh, that we are kind of getting a, a strong trend for a few uh, bars in a row so to do that we can just add a condition to our threshold here that is literally called a signal counter. We're gonna count those signals and say only get a signal once we've reached three, not 13, three in a row. So let me run this through that. And now we've narrowed it down so that one, two, three, now we're getting signals. One, two, three, now we're getting signals. And uh, there were a few places on this chart that we found that actually did provide a slightly better fill. Okay, so we're one step away to bringing this in and starting to have fun with the actual trade management part. But you'll notice if we take a step back and remember what our goal is here is we're creating distinct entry signals. So each one of these on a bar by bar basis is technically a signal, right? But if we're, if we're actually planning on trading this in a live system, oftentimes uh, it can be much cleaner depending on how you wanna trade. Uh, to block out any of these duplicate signals. Let's, let's just try to get this first signal and clean up the rest. So our last step here is to add the signal blocker. It does exactly that. It blocks signals in different ways. I'm gonna set it to kind of a high number, run it through there. And now we're just getting the first signal of a trend um, and blocking the next for up to 50 bars. Uh, that was sort of arbitrary, but I found that it kind of works in this case. Um, but of course, as you're building, you want to be running far more tests than I'm doing just in this simple demo. So, all right, cool. So that is the first step, building our trade signal. Now let's close this window. It'll save our work. Now let's bring it into Blackbird, step two. So as you can see, we've actually got the trade panel on the right here. Uh, it's our own sort of chart trader. But you'll notice if I click go long or go short, nothing happens. Right? It's because we haven't told it what to do when we actually enter a trade. So all of those settings are down here in the order settings button. Okay. This is the Blackbird window. It kind of, I, I always like to call it the ATM on steroids because it has all basically all the same features, but goes much, much deeper in terms of what you can sort of control. So to speed things up for the demo, I've already put in my Bloodhound file that I was just working on. So once we start activating the auto trading button on the top right, that will start listening for these signals and enter automatically as if I had clicked go long instead. So now everything past that point is what we're going to set up now. So Jeremy, for our first order set, or I, actually we're going to build two order sets, a little spoiler here. Um, what should we do? Do you think a market entry or a limit entry would be better? Uh, you know, I'll, I'll just say, a, let's keep it simple today. The market entry is fine. I, I want to add, of course, you, 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 could, you could have a variety of different kind of entries there, as you can see. Of course, yeah. Okay, yeah, it keeps it nice and simple. Uh, so we've prepared our first order set with one contract on this CL chart. Now, if you recall from, uh, again, Jeremy kind of went through the slide quickly so we could actually dive into the demo for you. Um, but if you remember from that, um, we were going to have the profit target and the stop loss, at least at the beginning, attached to the Bollinger Band lines. So that's why we've got these Bollinger Bands on here. My plan is to have the profit target not only start where the Bollinger Band is, but follow it up and down. Um, along with the Bollinger Band. And then stop loss, same idea, attached to the bottom line, and then we'll add uh, an extra rule that involves the super trend, which is pretty cool. Okay. I just want to pipe in real quick, like the emphasis here is like, you like not very many systems that I've seen out there will actually kind of manipulate the profit target as well. 
and that's more than possible with software. In fact, you can also manipulate the entry too. So if you had a limit entry, you can have it jump up and down, follow an indicator, do all sorts of arbitrary stuff, much like a discretionary trader would. Exactly. And that that's a really fun part of my job is is I do demo sessions with brand new like trial users, the, the people who are trying to figure out if this is right for them. And it's exposed me to some really creative ideas that people do with like, hey, I just want to trail my limit entry down. Actually, like the last guy that was presenting, he had the uh, that was pretty cool where he was trailing the limit entry down based on the range of the bar. Um, that is the sort of thing that you can pre plan in Blackbird and say, this is how I'm going to do it when we enter the trade do it for me right so it's really cool what you can do okay so let's set that up profit target first these are presets just to speed things up for you but i'll just do a custom here and there's two parts to it so we're going to set the initial placement where it starts and then later on we're going to get to my favorite part of blackbird which is the trailing action rules so the initial placement now normally oftentimes you would just set you know hey set it to 10 ticks above price and that's where the profit target would be so if that's all you're doing, when you first look at this screen, you might be thinking, why is this so complicated? There's a lot going on in here if I just want to set it to, to 10 ticks, right? But that's because it does allow you to get a lot more creative with it. Uh, for example, setting it to an indicator. So let's go indicator. Uh, it looks like I already did this earlier, so it, it remembered. <laughs> but yeah, you'd select the Bollinger Band. Um, I set it to four, which is what matches what's on the chart. Got to make sure it, it matches what I have. And then and we just choose the... I just want to mention that those you can actually see all the indicators. He's just got a filter oh, yeah. there, so that yeah. So these are all the in, yeah. <laughs> and, and that's one thing you know. Some people are are concerned, like, hey, does it work with third party indicators? It does. And actually, we're the super trend is a third party indicator. Um, as long as it's coded reasonably well, we can we can definitely grab onto its outputs and work with it. Yeah. So for since we're working with the profit target, we got to set it to for a long trade the upper band. And if we were doing shorts, we would set it mirror reverse for the lower band. Okay, cool. And that's all there is to it for the initial placement. We'll get into trailing actions in a second here. Let's do the exact same thing for the stop loss. So we'll go in, get it on the lower band, and then we're going to test it out, make sure it actually is where I want it to be. All right, and we'll just swap that out. So stop loss, lower band, and we are good to go. Now, before we get into the really fun stuff, let me save our work. I want to show you the way that I validate this because, um, you know, user error, especially including with me, especially with me, um, is uh, uh, easy to do if you're not paying attention. So it's always good to validate as you go. Make sure that that each piece of the pie uh, that you set up is is uh, set up right. So we have this nice dynamic planner feature down here. Um, so if I click plan long or plan short, it's going to tell me where my orders will start or would start if I were to enter right now. So this is my quick and dirty way to say, yes, I set up the, the initial placements correctly at the appropriate indicator levels. And as a side note, this is also pretty cool. It's, it's intended for discretionary traders. You know, if, if you, even if you're doing automatic, let's say you see this opportunity and you say, you know what, I wanna jump in now, you know, despite not getting a signal. No problem, you can plan it. And then you can say, you know what? I like this, but I'm gonna tighten my stop loss. I don't like it quite that much. So let's bring that up. And then if I were to hit execute, it would enter the trade according to that adjustment. So it's it's sort of uh, uh, changing your plans on the fly um, without having to go in and like modify your whole plan. So it's a nice uh, discretionary tool. Cool, so we've confirmed that's working. Now we get to go cooking with the trailing actions. Okay, so profit target, that's an easy one. Just follow the Bollinger. So let's do that. Go trailing actions, set up a custom rule. So the way this works is when something happens, do something to my order, and then do we repeat that action? Okay, we're gonna get into triggers in a minute. It's a lot of really cool stuff you can listen for, but we don't need that to just basically attach our profit target to the indicator. So I'm going to go do that. We'll go, I did super trend earlier. Let's do Bollinger. Double click and make sure it matches what's on the chart. And again, it's the upper band. So for a long trade, I wanted to follow the upper band and let's mirror it for the short. And then we just repeat that action. So repeat indefinitely every one bar. So every bar, as it goes forward, it's going to evaluate and say, okay, let's move it up or down to, to follow the Bollinger. And that's it. That profit target is ready to go. Let's sort of mimic that for the stop loss and then add our trigger rule as well, because I've got an idea to, to expand on this uh, beyond just what we've talked about. So we'll do the Bollinger first. 
Bollinger, swap it so it's on the lower band since it's the, the uh, uh, stop loss and repeat that every bar. Okay, <clears throat> so um, they'll follow those bands, but Jeremy and I were discussing ideas for, for expanding this to, to have more control over how the trade will play out. And one of those ideas that I've actually seen a lot of people do is uh, base our action on the current, the unrealized profit of the current trade. And so we were thinking and found it actually works pretty well in this case, um, is after we've reached, and there's a lot of triggers you can listen for, but after we've reached a profit of 50 ticks, seems to work pretty well in this case, but of course testing is required to validate it, you know, more than just this one example I'm gonna show you. But once we've reached at least 50 ticks in profit, move the stop loss, instead of being with the Bollinger, move it to that super trend, which that's its job is to act as a, as a stop loss trailer. So we will uh, respect its intent there. So super trend, double click, and that plot is just called the super, uh, the stop dot. So we can follow that, well named, and then repeat that as well. And so if we take a look, I'm going to add another order set in a second, but if we take a look on how we plan this to act, and we'll see it in action in just a minute here, it's going to start, let's, let's imagine it started here. It's going to start down here, the stop loss, and as price moves up, it's going to follow the Bollinger Band up. And then at some point, let's say price uh, reaches a certain point where we've made 50 ticks in profit, it will then jump up and start following the super trend. Really cool. Okay, before we dive into that, one last thing that I love to do personally, and I've seen a lot of people during our demo sessions, they love this idea, is adding a runner. So a runner, um, if, if you're familiar with that term, it's basically just uh, having an order that has no profit target or a really high profit target. The intention is so that if if your price if the price is going to go crazy, you want to try and capture that that special event and and take advantage of of as much profit as you can out of uh, the times the profit or the price goes uh, way up. So we could create a new one, but let's just go ahead and copy from A. That's order set A. Now we have two contracts split up between two equal um, order sets. We'll delete the profit target to make it a true runner. But to make it a proper runner, like an actual, like let's grab as much profit as we can, we need to, to change, to tweak this, the, the trailing rules on our stop loss a little bit so that it's, it's ready, it's, it's up by the price when the price goes nuts in those special events. So let's go modify our plan in this stop loss and instead, for, for our runner stop loss, instead of having it follow just the super trend, which may not take full advantage of a runner, let's modify that to do more of a fixed trail, right? So instead of that, let's go back to price. And uh, you could just do, you know, minus 10, so it's just following 10 ticks behind. Um, but what I see a lot of people do is base it on the ATR. So even as you start getting more creative here, you can even set the offset based on an indicator. So you can go really deep here. So we're gonna say, I, I already did it earlier, so it's already in here. Normally you would just see it like this and you just type in the ATR. So in case you're wondering why it's already, it's reading my mind, it's because I was practicing earlier. But there's the ATR. And we're gonna set that to, let's say a, a two times the ATR. I see a lot of people do that pretty effectively. So you're basically saying, as that runner stop loss goes up, it's following the price two ATRs behind it. Hopefully for a nice healthy profit. Okay. So, still repeating indefinitely, I think, correct me if I'm wrong, Jeremy, everything looks good. We can start playing with this. Yeah, I think we're good. Cool. And obviously, we're just touching on stuff. This is a, a short webinar, but there's lots of additional features to, to help maximize your profits, minimize your losses according to ideas that you have, but we don't have time to go into, you know, super deep there. So, we'll save our work. Let's jump to the live, quote, quote, live. This is a, a playback because it would be crazy to make you wait three minutes per bar to, to see if something happens. Will it enable auto trading? Again, we're going to ignore shorts, so we're just going to enable long trades for this, and let's just play it forward. Uh, and as you can imagine, um, I made sure that there was a signal coming up shortly. There we go. Okay, slow that down. Just make sure everything looks good. Yep. So we got profit target at the Bollinger, two stop losses at the bottom Bollinger. And uh, as it moves up, it will follow. There you go. It moved with the Bollinger. One thing you will notice is that the stop losses are not moving down with the other Bollinger. 
Uh, it may seem like a bug, but if you think about it, most traders don't widen their stop losses dynamically. Now you can, you can override that, but by default as a safety mechanism, um, if it's told to go down, we're not gonna have the stop loss follow the Bollinger into the abyss, right? <laughs> so it's just hanging out there ready to move up. Now remember, look over here, it says 43 ticks in profit we've made unrealized in this order. And as soon, there it is. So as soon as it hits 50, those two actions kicked into place. One stop loss is now following the super trend and following it up as it goes. And one is just hanging out to ATR behind the price. And hopefully that one will have lots of opportunity to follow up. Now let's go ahead and speed up. If I recall, that guy unfortunately uh, did not get a great opportunity to follow up, but it's still profitable. So it's just not quite the, the runner, the dream runner scenario that, uh, that we all hope for one day, right? So we'll go ahead and there we go. So it came down, hit our runner's stop loss, and the other stop loss has followed the super trend. Okay. Oh, that was close. Okay. Now, one thing that was kind of cool is when you're doing two trailing actions at the same time, um, by default, it's going to automatically follow the one that's closest to price. Because again, that's a common thing, right? So if, you, if you're moving your stop loss around, oftentimes you want it to be whichever action is, is closest to price, reducing your overall risk. It depends on how you want to trade them. So as this Bollinger creeps up above the super trend, you'll notice it's now following the Bollinger because it's closer to price. That's default behavior, but of course you can override that. Okay. And what's kind of cool about Bollinger Bands is as, as the, the fun part of the trade has ended and it's starting to consolidate and uh, go flat, um, our profit and stop loss have, have naturally narrowed down. Hopefully we'll eke out a little bit more from our profit target, but at least our stop loss is protecting us uh, right there. We did get a new signal from Bloodhound, so our rules lined up, but it was ignored because we're already in a long trade. And let's speed this up a little bit because we know there's probably not a whole lot left in this trade. There we go. So we hit our stop loss. And in this case, it did result in a $2,600 profit. That's two contracts on the CL. Um, but it's important to emphasize. So some people don't quite you know, catch this right away, but it's really important to remember, we are tool builders. We are not trade coaches. So if we're ever in like a, like a demo or sales webinar or something, and we show a profit, it can be just as valuable using these tools or any trade system tool to, to, to capture, to discover your bad ideas, just as much as it is to uh, find your good ideas or sometimes stumble on a good idea in many cases. Um, because a lot of this is repetition, trying things, see how they work, back test, forward test, and, uh, and discover things you never realized about your system. Because in order to do it all manually, it's, it's so slow and tedious in the way most people do it, or many people do it, that you won't have the broad view of how your system actually behaves over many, many, many iterations. So, um, like I mentioned, um, I'm the guy who does demos with trial users. So what I would recommend, um, we do offer a free 30 day trial because we stand behind our products. We want to make sure that if you're going to buy our stuff that you validated that it actually will work right for your trading behavior. So Jeremy's going to talk about, uh, support resources and the website that you go to, to learn more sharkindicators.com. What you do is click on the big blue button. Watch the video, it's two minutes. It goes into a little bit nicer detail on some of the stuff we've talked about today. So definitely watch that. And then download the trial. So you go in here and when you check this box, that'll let you schedule time with me so we can actually dive into your specific scenario, talk about your goals and see if these tools are actually right for you or maybe not. If they're not, I don't want you to, to be stuck with it, but the vast majority of people find some really creative uses for these tools. So I'm excited to work with you. So with that, I think we covered everything, right, Jeremy? Yeah, that's great, Keith. Cool. Let's see if I can steal my screen back here, or steal the screen back, I should say. Yeah, that, that should work. Okay, I'm not sure if I got the, the, it looks like it's, oh, I have to change the presenter. Sorry, guys, I'm a little bit, uh, <laughs> it's, it's been a long time since I've used one meeting. Time. Yeah, and, and am I showing the right screen here? What Looks like, yeah, the, the getting right. started. Um, okay, good. <laughs> I got to check every time. All right, thanks. Uh, so, yeah, I just want to, again, emphasize, like, Keith was able to build a an auto trader from scratch in, within a couple minutes, I think 15 to 20 minutes-ish. Of course, there was a lot of explanation and showing the demo, uh, you know, as well. It took some time, but if, if you were to sort of just 
go at it without any interruption. Uh, he could probably do it in five minutes. Um, that's a hell of a lot faster than you can certainly do it uh, when you're coding it. Um, and really, that's the power of our, of our software is the ability to to build stuff really quickly. That means you get to test stuff faster. That means you get to iterate quicker. It takes you less effort, less time. And if you're, you know, if the alternative for you was actually hiring a coder, it, it costs you a, a lot less money. And and really, it lets you focus on on building your trade system instead of learning how to code. Uh, and and really, that's where you know I think I hope you agree with me that that's where the best use of your time is is actually is actually the trading part. You know, so. Um, and, well, and also, if you've noticed too, everything was real time, right? He would change some of the criteria up, right? And you would see the chart instantly update. So that's a, that's incredibly fast. Like that's faster than any coder could do it because you, you'd have to compile it and then, you know, presumably debug it a little bit and then you can finally see your results. It's a, it's a fair bit of number of steps. Um, much, much quicker just doing it for the no code solution, seeing it like bounce in real time, seeing, seeing your results in real time. So if you're itching to get started, uh, we have a couple resources to get you get you going. Uh, one of them is is our online documentation and videos. We've got tons of that on our website. Like we've got literally 10, 12 years of, of stuff. Uh, we have how many how many videos do we have on on YouTube? We're creeping up on 800 videos on YouTube. Yeah. I realize that's a lot, uh, but uh, we we actually are in in the process of of doing an AI search kind of algorithm. Uh, that will let people look up stuff a little lot quicker. Uh, we also have unlimited e email support, which is also it, it's it's for trial users as much as it is is it for uh, paid customers as well. And this is also a fantastic resource. We have a live workshop. This is basically a classroom, a live classroom where we have our instructor uh, Zach White, who's been doing it for many many years now. Uh, and and you can just basically ask a question live or submit it beforehand and then he'll build out the system for you build out your trade system uh, solve some of your problems teach you how to use the software and that's a free resource for both uh customers and trial users it's just actually free you can join in anytime uh we also have a discord community and by the way that yeah again and as i mentioned there's actually two workshops that run every week two workshops thursdays and fridays uh discord community that's also kind of it's quite active uh, and we have private one-on-one -on -one training, if that's what you'd like to uh, to do, if you want more of a customized approach. Um, and that really is um, wraps up our, our presentation. So again, it's a 30-day free trial. It's at sharkindicators.com. I hope you'll check us out, get started. Uh, it's There's a lot of incredible material from there. And actually, one of the most exciting things I find is customers that use it, and especially that are new, you know, they have these incredible ideas. and you know, it's always really exciting to see like what you guys come up with in in terms of your trade systems. It's uh, it's it's really really fascinating. Sometimes we you guys end up using the software in ways we never really thought was possible or even intended. So that's that looks like we actually finished uh, uh, you know, pretty quickly here. I think in um, oh no, we have one more minute left. Do we? <laughs> I was looking at two o'clock here. <laughs> say, uh, feel free to take a question. <laughs> Yeah, okay. Q &A. one question there. Yeah, I thought I'd mention though before you do. You know, you mentioned about uh, the the 800 videos. I do like to emphasize. You know, some sometimes I'll be working with someone and they'll they'll I can tell they're kind of daunted. <laughs> like I need to learn everything before I can do anything. That's the wrong approach. These tools, there's a lot here, and we have customers that have been with us for years, and they're always coming up and tinkering. So learn one thing at a time that fits what your goal is and expand on that. Just like learning anything big, uh, it starts with one step. So, and we're here to help along the way. Yeah, yeah and I would what, say- What can, is that uh, Q&A question there? Well, I, I would just want to mention, you, you can do a, a lot with just no, even knowing just a small part of the software, right? So you can take your time with, with uh, the more advanced features. You don't necessarily need to to employ those if for your trade system. Like a lot of the very common, things that are done are, are very simple and, and don't require very many steps. So someone asked if you could use work with the sunny bands. I'm not actually familiar with that indicator in particular, but I'll just say it does work with any indicator that's on your, your system with uh, like installed in, in IndiaTrader, right? So you could have downloaded it off the internet. You could have got it from futures. Oh, sorry, it's NexusFi now, NexusFi.com, or maybe, you know, uh, maybe you had it even custom coded 
as long as it as long as it uh, displays some plots on the chart and or communicates with data series if you if you're a developer you know what that means um th th then you should be fine you can plug that information right into our our software and use it to to enhance your signals or use it to space your signals off of it yeah, it's like 98 percent or something like that of indicators work perfectly yeah, yeah. If you guys uh, want to double check, Sonny Harris is one of our other pre presenters, and she made a day trading tool using Bollinger Bands and some of the other indicators um, to know when it's, you know, trending up, trending down. And uh, if you search her and get back to Oscar via email or something, that could work. But um, I want to thank you guys for being here. Don't take this the wrong way but you are welcome to come back in, but I am going to dismiss you after I say yeah, goodbye no, to you on the air, works. just so you <laughs> came at the wrong button. Put the handcuffs on me. I'm, I'm perfectly okay with that, to be honest, because I was a plan on just leaving it on, and, and I would rather have the safest possible. Well, if you'd like to stay for the last presenter, you know, you're welcome to rejoin, but yeah. I'm going to dismiss you and make you rejoin so you lose the privilege to end it for everybody. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds good. Okay. Jeremy, there, there were a couple of remaining questions, but they're they're mostly like product questions, so go ahead and just shoot us an email at support, and we'll, we'll help you out. Yeah, sales at sharkindicators.com. Thank you for being here. Incredible presentation. Ladies and gentlemen, good news. No more expensive programmers. Now you can create your own trade signals, experiment with new ideas, and validate them with backtesting. You can literally create your own ninja trader system in as little as about 15 minutes with no coding required. Amazing. I have a few ideas. I talked to Joel. I'd like to talk to you guys too about automating my own system, but if, gentlemen, if you're looking to create and optimize your own trading system and trade management strategies without an encoding necessary, Mr. Jeremy Tang and Keith Wolf of Shark Indicators have a solution for you. We've put their link in the box, and you can learn more by going to sharkindicators.com, which I'll also put in the box in a minute. Thank you guys for being here. I hope you have a great weekend. Please come back and see us again on Trader's Corner. Thank you so much. Not a problem. Thank you.